Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamu alaikum. Welcome to the channel. Today we will talk about one of the very important topic from head and neck space infections. Let's start our discussion. Topic today is about what we call as peritonsillar abscess or quinsy. These two terms are synonymously used. This is nothing but collection of pus in the loose areolar tissue of peritonsillar space. And this is the space which is there between the capsule of the tonsil and the superior constrictor muscle. If you look at this picture closely, you can see that this is the palatine tonsil. Around this is the palatine tonsil capsule and this black colored space is what we call as peritonsillar space and then this is the superior constrictor muscle and lateral to that is the parapharyngeal space about which we will talk about some other day. To describe it a bit more in detail you can see that this is the palatine tonsil, this is the crypta magna one of the biggest crypts we know that there are so many crypts on the surface of the palatine tonsil. So this is the biggest one which is present in the upper part of the tonsil. And this is the space that is peritonsillar space. This is bluish line is the capsule of the tonsil which is covering the palatine tonsils. And then is the loose areolar tissue where there is this space which we call as peritonsillar space. And then is the superior constrictor muscle of the pharynx. So medially is the capsule of the tonsil, laterally is the superior constrictor muscle and in between is this peritonsillar space. This is present at the anterosuperior area of the tonsil. It is more there and here are the minor salivary glands which is called as Weber's gland in which there is infection which leads to peritonsillar abscess. The reason being that why in supratonsillar area it is more common because low loose areolar tissue is maximum and there is plenty of potential space in this particular area and then inflammatory process from the crypta magna it usually spreads to this space and you can see the crypta magna only this much tonsillar tissue is left behind. So if any infection is spreading through the crypta magna, that infection has to pass only this much tissue as compared to rest of the tonsil. So it is easy for the infection to spread to this anterosuperior part of the peritonsillar space. Usually it is a complication of acute tonsillitis and taking the advantage of depth of this crypta magna, the infection reaches the peritonsillar space. This is on oropharyngeal examination. You can see this wide opening of the crypta magna in the upper part of the palatine tonsils. Initially, the infection may be non suppurative as we know that the any inflammatory process, it may be at cataral stage, then pre suppuration stage and later on it will be at the suppurative stage. So when it is non suppurative, we call it as peritonsillitis. But later on, due to the high virulence of the organism, coupled with low resistance of the patient, suppuration can occur and the transformation of the disease from peritonsillitis to peritonsillar abscess or quinsy. As I just mentioned, usually it is secondary to acute tonsillitis. But in chronic tonsillitis, the tonsillar crypts, usually crypta magna is the culprit and there is mixed uh, etiology, this uh, bacteriology 
and usually streptococcus and staphylococcus aureus are even anaerobic organisms can also be involved mostly it affects the adults than the children and it is usually unilateral though very occasionally bilateral abscesses are being mentioned in the literature so symptoms will be that usually there will be history of acute tonsillitis it will be sudden in onset high grade fever usually with rigors severe pain on the affected side of the throat so unilateral pain will be more marked odynophagia so much that even the patient would be unable to swallow his own saliva so to memorize three d's dysphagia dyspnea and dysphonia due to pharyngeal and laryngeal edema are the more predominant symptoms clinical features we can divide them into general symptoms signs and symptoms and local one also in general there will be as i just mentioned high grade fever with the chills rigors will be there malaise then there will be body aches patient may complain of a headache there can be nausea and constipation while local symptoms that will be marked you know limited to the oropharynx they may include throat pain odynophagia as i just mentioned that even patient would not be able to swallow his own saliva hot potato vice now this is very important the vice will not be hoarse because vocal cords are not involved but the vice will be hoarse uh, hot potato just like someone has put a very hot thing over the tongue so this will be the reason for hot potato vice because the inflammatory process is in the vicinity of the base of the tongue that is in the oropharynx foul breath then referred otalgia on the same side ipsilateral otalgia and the patient may be holding his hand over the same ear and the neck may be tilted that is torticollis may be there and even trismus patient will be unable to open the mouth due to the spasm of the medial pterygoid muscle so trismus will be there so bending of the head and neck ipsilaterally on the same side where there will be you know this quincy will be present on the same side patient will be bending his head and neck and holding his head over the same hand trismus difficulty in opening mouth dribbling of the saliva from the ipsilateral angle of the mouth because there will be odynophagia foul smelling breath tongue may be coated with whitish material due to dehydration enlarged and tender ipsilateral jugulodigastric lymph nodes so a large red and smooth surfaced globular fluctuating swelling near the upper pole of the tonsils causing the uvula to be pushed towards the opposite side while the tip of the uvula will be pointing towards the same side due to the spasm of the muscularis uvulae this point i just show you in the next picture also that this is the smooth congested swelling not only of the tonsil but the adjacent soft palate and the uvula is pushed towards the opposite side while the tip of the uvula is pointing towards the ipsilateral side ipsilateral side means towards that side where there is quincy present so tonsillar pillars and soft palate congested and swollen uvula swollen and edematous bulging of the soft palate so the congestion is not only limited to the tonsils but the adjacent area of the soft palate is also swollen and congested there may be mucopus over the tonsillar surface cervical lymphadenopathy usually jugulodigastric lymph nodes and torticollis that is the neck and head is bent towards the same side and patient may be sporting this head and neck with his hands so if you compare these two sides this is the uvula and this is the other side which looks normal that this is the tonsil this is the interior pillar 
while on this side you can see there is no demarcation because the tonsil is swollen along with the uh, adjacent area of the soft palate also congested and edematous so there is no demarcation between the two uvula is also seems to be congested and swollen and being pushed towards the opposite side Usually, this is a clinical diagnosis, straightforward diagnosis, but if still we go for routine investigations for complete blood count, of course, we ex will expect the leukocytosis with polymorph nucleocytosis. Uh, we can send the throat swab for culture and sensitivity for the proper antibiotic to start with. But if still in doubt, we can go for what we call as transoral pharyngeal ultrasonography, that is TOPU transoral pharyngeal ultrasonography which will not only help us to localize and confirm the presence of pus but ultrasounded guided aspiration can also be done which will be not only confirming the diagnosis but at the same time will be treating the abscess as well or we can go if still in doubt we can go for the CT neck to confirm the diagnosis and the presence of the pus and extent of that pus as well. In the differential diagnosis, of course, at the top of the list will be acute tonsillitis, but in acute tonsillitis, both tonsils will be congested and the congestion will be limited only to the tonsils. While in peritonsillar abscess, we just saw that the congestion is not only confined to tonsils, but it is spreading towards the adjacent area of the soft palate and the uvula. Then acute retropharyngeal abscess, parapharyngeal space mass or parapharyngeal abscess, impacted last molar tooth, and a tumor of the tonsils we should consider in the differential diagnosis. About parapharyngeal abscess and retropharyngeal abscess, we will talk about in uh, some other videos very soon. So complications, the infection can spread from the peritonsillar space to other neck, head and neck space uh, infections, especially in the vicinity are parapharyngeal space and retropharyngeal space. So there can be formation of Peripharyngeal or retropharyngeal abscesses from the peritonsillar abscess. This abscess or quinsy, there can be spontaneous rupture which can lead to aspiration or laryngeal edema and the respiratory airway may be jeopardized. So we may need tracheostomy for the airway restoration because this is an infection. If it remains uncontrolled, there can be septicemia or even pneumonitis or lung abscesses. There can be jugular vein thrombosis. Spontaneous hemorrhage can occur because acute inflammatory process is going on. Vascular supply is very high. So spontaneous hemorrhage can occur and there can be recurrence of this peritonsillar abscess. So with that, we come to the end of this uh, video. In the uh, next video, we will talk about uh, treatment of this uh, peritonsillar abscess so you are requested to like comment and share and don't forget to subscribe the channel and thanks for watching